Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Swanson. I am your host today for the Field of Fork webinar, uh, which is brought to you by North Dakota State University Extension. Anyways, this is our 11th year we've done the Field of Fork series, and so we're so glad you joined us today. Uh, if you're curious, we have archived all previous year's webinars, and those are on uh, the Field of Fork webpage. The next slide will show our upcoming webinars. We hope you can join us for these two. And next week will be Andrew Thostenson, uh, our extension safety specialist, uh, pesticide safety specialist, about what gardeners should know about pesticides. We have a special request from you. Uh, this program is sponsored in part with grant funding from the USDA's Agricultural Marketing Service. So we will ask you to complete a short online survey that will, that will be emailed right after today's webinar. And as a thank you, Julie will provide prizes to the lucky winners of the random drawings. Um, so be sure to put in your complete address on the follow-up form, including your city, state, and zip code. So again, welcome to today's webinar. I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, Shannon Coleman, is an associate professor and state extension specialist in food safety and consumer production at Iowa State University. Coleman's extension and outreach work includes developing and disseminating food safety curricula and resources for Iowa's emerging, very small, and small food manufacturers. Her research uses various evaluation theories to evaluate food manufacturers' attitudes, intentions, and behaviors toward following food safety practices. In addition, Coleman has expanded her outreach and research to fill gaps in improving food safety and the local food system from farm to table, including developing, developing curriculum and resources for youth, adults, and gardeners. In today's presentation, Shannon will present on produce safety practices that gardeners should follow from home to, to the market. So Shannon, take it away. All right, we see people from all over North Dakota, Kansas, South Dakota, um, Wisconsin, so welcome everybody. Um, so learning objectives for today, um, they are that we will number one, identify food safety risks that can lead to cross-contamination in the garden. Um, next is illustrate when you should wash your hands. And then the third one is demonstrate food safety risk and corrective actions through a scenario activity. So there will be an interactive portion to the presentation today. Um, although um, this image looks probably a little funny, um, it is not all fun and games when it comes to foodborne outbreaks. Foodborne outbreaks have increased um, overall um, with 46% of outbreaks um, from 1998 to 2008 being attributed to fresh produce and nuts. Um, this image here shows for um, from the Water Quality and Health Council that shows that there was 29 recalls in the United States from 1985 to 2017. Um, the highest recall report were for fruit, vegetables, and nut products, accounting for 11 of those, which translate to about 30, 38% of recalls. Um, as far as um, you being a gardener, um, I know in the state of Iowa, people who grow fresh produce in their home gardens and take them to the farmer's market. And so that's why we try to focus um, even for small growers and gardeners when we talk about doing uh, food safety practices um, in the garden. And so um, in the state of Iowa, we have um, the program Growing Together Iowa, and it is a um, food security um, program where we have our master gardeners growing fresh produce that will go to the donation gardens. And maybe about year two or three of that program, um, I was asked to develop a poster, which turned into a sign that is um, can put it be put into the garden to remind the gardeners to follow safe practices. And so um, I'll, I, don't, I don't have that one in my script, but I'll work on getting it in my script or at least um, providing it to Julie and her um, intern. But um, if you wanted to use this, this is a found available on our ISU extension store. And so in the next few slides, I will be explaining um, a bit about the science and the produce safety practices behind these um, areas that we highlighted here in this poster. So first, starting with produce concern of animals. Um, 
due to the proximity of humans, wildlife, domestic animals, um, they are um, very likely to harbor those foodborne pathogens that could be a risk to your garden. So when you are thinking about um, doing a risk assessment of your garden, you wanna make sure you're looking for both domestic and wild animals um, because they um, carry a lot of those who, human foodborne pathogens in their feces and they can be spread throughout your garden and your fields. So you wanna look into ways of limiting their access to your garden. Uh, which is essential to ensure that the produce that you uh, want to take to the market does not become contaminated. Water is another thing that comes up a lot when we talk about produce safety. Um, so many pathogens can be introduced to fresh produce through water um, and spread. And so they are, you need to understand the risk associated with water to kind of understand um, which is the appropriate water that you should use um, in your garden itself. Um, without water, there would not be any fresh produce. So when you're managing your water quality, it is um, proper to use the, a critical understanding to reduce the pathogen safety risk when it comes to your fruit and vegetables. So when we talk about water quality, it's based on the source. And there are three common source of water. Um, surface, ground, and municipal water. And so out of these three, we look at the risk. Um, and so higher risk is with those surface water and lower risk is with the municipal water. And we would recommend, or even yesterday with the, with the training, we're getting ready to um, put out for processes to talk about portable water or uh, drinking water. So um, making sure you use the appropriate water in your um, gardens and fields. And if you are using some of the other sources of water, um, going through the process of making sure that they're appropriately tested. Um, workers with their um, improper or volunteers with their improper hygiene practices, um, there's water, soil, animal feces, feces, organic matter, dirt, and other ways that can transmit foodborne pathogens to um, fresh produce. So it's essential when you're working in your garden that you follow safe practices, such as making sure that your um, food contact surfaces meet the standards that are appropriate for um, harvesting and in a, any other activities um, in the garden. And so looking at the the makeup of your food contact surfaces, you want to make sure that they're non-toxic, non-absorbent, durable, and can handle corrosion, um, and that they're easily, that you can easily clean and sanitize them if you, if possible. So as a gardener, you want to make, gardener, you want to make sure that you're not transmitting any foodborne pathogens to your family and friends, or if you're taking it to the market, to your customers. And so you want to make sure that you have a proper cleaning and sanitizing um, policy when it comes to your containers and equipments to help reduce the risk of foodborne pathogens. Um, a lot during this um, COVID-19 um, pandemic, hand washing has come up. And so it's always a good reminder to um, remind everybody about hand washing and especially in your gardens. Um, so number one way to reduce risk of any infectious bacteria or viruses is through hand washing practices. And so listed here are the appropriate steps that are listed by the um, Center of Disease Control and Prevention. So we're starting off with wetting your hands with clean and running water and turning off your tap and applying soap. Lather your hands together with the soap and make sure you get between your hands and between your fingers and underneath your nails. And you wanna scrub for about 20 seconds. And you've, you wanna make your day feel special or even smile at yourself. You can sing happy birthday to yourself a couple of times. And then you want to rinse your hands um, with running water and then dry it with a um, clean paper towel or even air dry them. Um, so. Um, when you're thinking about your gardens, especially if you have a community, community garden, you want to um, remind 
um, your volunteers and everybody to wash their hands. So you can do that with the portable hand washing station. Um, and in the chat, I have put some links to some hand washing demographic um, posters that we have through Iowa State Extension and Outreach um, store that are free and available to print. And the one here on this slide is one of them that is in that um, chat for you. And so um, the, the question always comes up is y'all mentioned washing your hands all the time, but when should we um, actually work, wash our hands? And so here are some examples here, which include, you know, after using the restroom facilities, um, before and after eating and even smoking. Uh, when I was working on my hydroponic tomatoes project, um, the horticulture faculty member asked, um, did any one of us smoke? Because there is a possible transmission of, um, of a, a disease or something toxic to, to tomatoes from um, actual cigarettes. So uh, with my lab mate who was a smoker, I had to tell him sometimes mm -mm, you can't come or you're gonna have to wear gloves because he was a smoker. And then also, as far as washing your hands, um, it could be any time that your hands become contaminated. Um, so that's why we recommend that you have like a portable hand washing kit um, in your actual field that can contain an igloo um, water container, a bucket to capture your water, some hand soap, paper towels, and a trash can. So, um, Looking at entries of contamination, so when you have bruises, punctures, damages to your produce, um, it is possible through those entry of contaminations of the plant tissues, um, such as the somata, um, that there could be some transmission of these foodborne pathogens. And there's a few papers that had looked at that research and when I did my research as, as a student, that was some of the things we were looking at as well. So, um, you know, the popular opinion is that these pathogens will survive but not thrive in an intact or uninjured surface produce. Um, but you want to make sure that you are um, the, you're doing things to make sure that you are not incorporating these um, damaged produce items in your actual um items that you want to take to market or even to your local um, um, food pantry. So you want to understand that if you see those bruised or dropped produce that you want to discard them. All right, so in the title, we also talk about transportation. So transportation to the market. So there are various sources of transportation when we're talking about taking your um, fresh produce to the pantry and the market. Um, it is recommended that you adapt your transportation sources to fit the best practices. Um, so number one, you wanna make sure that you have a clean and covered transportation. My, my favorite form of transportation for fresh produce could be a large SUV or even a cargo van because they're already covered. And so you don't have to worry about any pests or birds or anybody else um, dropping anything on top of your produce. So um, however, if you have a truck, um, and you want to put your produce in that truck bed, um, best practices is to use a tarp uh, or cover the bed um, to make sure that your produce does not become contaminated. And then I think this is one of our final things before we go into our activity is thinking about your personal protection. So following appropriate personal hygiene and cleanliness practices in your garden is essential. And so some of those recommended things are, list, are list, listed here. Um, and they are, you know, making sure that you tie your hair back. Um, also, especially if it's long, um, you wanna make sure that you're not eating or drinking or even smoking in your garden. So having a, a actual designated area for that. Um, with your volunteers and workers being aware if they're sick and ask them do not to come to work when they're sick. So, and also being aware of some of those um, symptoms that are associated with foodborne pathogens such as fever, diarrhea, and vomiting. Um, 
It is also recommended that you do not wear jewelry in the garden. So leave your um, big diamonds or big rings or things like that out um, because those can serve as um, physical hazards um, to, um, to your customers. And then lastly, we ask that you wear clean clothing in the garden as dirty clothing can transmit foodborne pathogens. And so um, this would be a good time to just take a break and also just talk about some of the things that we are doing here in the state of Iowa as it relates to garden safety, as well as uh, some promotion of safe, uh, not safe, or nutritious eating. Um, in the summer, our food and health specialists um, from our unit of extension and outreach um, deliver an in-person training called Produce Basics. And this program um, provides participants with that um, information about learning about preparing produce as well as um, about safe practices as it relates to uh, fresh produce and gardens. And so participants will learn how to store, clean, prepare, and preserve fresh produce and vegetables. Um, this program includes a lecture, interactive activities, and food demonstration. And so today, um, you are lucky. Um, you will get a sneak peek into our Produce Basics program as um, one of the interactive activities that is involved with that program is also a part of this series here where we have Produce Safety in the Garden, which is a series of interactive activities that um, can be used as a form of training with workers, volunteers in your, um, in your operation or in your gardens. And so you'll specifically be interacting with the food safety scenario activity, which starts on page four. Um, in, the, in the guide itself, we have facilitator guides and workbook and worksheets that can be used for um, these activities. And so going through our instructions, so we'll, and this is where I'm glad that um, Scott was able to enable the chat. So we, for the instructions in the chat for each scene, you will list any food safety risk and a corrective action for the scene. So when we're saying food safety risk, it is similar to food safety hazards. And so those are agents that will cause potential adverse health reactions to our customers. And so corrective actions are taken to eliminate those food safety risks. So you'll want to put both in the chat. And so we're, for this activity, there are six scenes, but today you'll only interact with three. So I'll give... Um, some time for you to respond to each scene and I'll even call you out in the chat or um, give you kudos in the chat as you're putting in your responses and then we'll go through each scene and kind of discuss the risk and the corrective action. So all right we're about to get ready. So we are starting off at scene one. So at 8 30 a.m. Jim, the garden manager, usually works alone and comes to work with visible dirt and stains on his clothing. So in the chat, I want you to put in some responses of the food safety risk and the corrective action for this scene. So RK put in a risk and the action and the corrective action. I'm seeing a variety of things. I'm seeing clothing. I'm seeing tools. Usually I see some other things highlighted. And we'll talk about that in the um, when we look at the actual responses. Y'all are doing a good job in the chat. All right. So I'm going to wrap it up and we're going to put up, we're going to show the responses. So yes, food safety risks. Um, the ones that are outlined here on the slide, um, what I love about this activity, and that's why I'm kind of um, um, paying close attention to the chat, because usually when I do this, people point out a lot of 
a lot of different things that we don't see um, usually. And so what I saw in the chat and some of the responses uh, with the correct responses is the dirty clothing. Um, somebody said one time when I did it, open toe shoes because they, they couldn't really tell. They look kind of, but they couldn't tell. And then, and what I saw today, which I'm going to add to this um, discussion is everybody talked about how the shoes are also dirty. Um, but in my work with the Master Gardeners, um, when we did a focus group, they say we are dirty. We are dirty people. <laughs> so we work in dirt. So I think the biggest thing is just making sure that you are aware um, of your dirty clothing and tools and just, you know, being cautious and making sure that you're not spreading anything um, in your garden itself. So correct, um, corrective actions can be clean clothing, closed toe shoes, cleaning off your shovel after use, just making sure if any of that backup dirt, um, backed up dirt that is um, stuck on the shovel, not um, spreading anything. All right, good job. So we're going to move to the next one. We're moving to scene three. Um, so at 9.15 a.m. while harvesting, Jim noticed numerous animal droppings on and around the produce garden. So in the chat, we're going to identify the food safety risk and corrective action. Keep the animals out. Let's see. The animal drop droppings, I see fences. I'm actually over here taking notes because I want to make sure we identify these things in the future when I do these activities. All right. So we're going to move on to look at the responses and see how well I'm matching up with your response. And I see a lot of cleaning it up. So animal droppings is the risk. Um, and so I, I see a lot of people saying clean it up. The hard part with cleaning up the, the feces is um, there could be a possible um, you could also spread it when you're trying to clean it. And so uh, one of the recommendations or best practices is to do is to segregate that area and just um, identify it as a no harvest zone. Um, and so you kind of um, figure out your best standard of how to handle the feces um, in your space um, as far as corrective actions. So I'm a, I see fences and other things. So yes, I forgot to put those in. I'm gonna put that in next time I offer it. And so now we're gonna move on to our final scene. And this is scene five. Um, so at 9.45 a.m., Jim could not locate his harvest containers right away. So he placed the harvest produce directly on the ground. So in the chat, Let's help, let's identify your food safety risk and your corrective actions. I see that the wood cannot be sanitized, soil contamination, no ground. Use sanitized containers, do not harvest until proper container. Yep. Love these recommendations. Soil contamination, dirt on the ground. Use a clean tart. Yep. All right. Let's look at the responses. So, container on the ground, wooden containers. Um, 
And when you look at the actual scenario, it's talking about the produce being directly on the ground. And yes, soils can be a source of contamination for fresh produce. And so someone recommended, you know, do not harvest till you have your proper container. So I also would suggest that Another thing is they see the container that is directly on the ground. There's a recommendation of best practices is to stack the container. So having one that you know will get, get uh, remain dirty because that is the one that you're going to use to stack your other containers on top of it. Um, and then there are some places where they just have those wooden containers. Um, I may know a farm very close to me that does that. And so um, a recommendation of adding some type of plastic liner to it to make sure that you're using that as a barrier to um, the wooden containers because that wooden container could splinter and then cause a um, cause a um, physical hazards to the pro to the fresh produce. And so congratulations. Thank y'all for um, interacting with me with this activity. I, I found out I wanted, I, I developed this to do it in person with, um, with growers and our master gardeners got very mad at Jim when we did it. And I told them they cannot be mean to Jim because Jim is a volunteer and you should be nice to him. Um, so we had to work on ways of how you can better communicate to Jim on what you need to do. So um, as I stated before, um, so this activity along with two others. So we have the food safety scenario, scenario, um, we have another one that talks about cross-contamination that is like a storyboard or a activity that you can interact and have volunteers. And then we also have one that's on food safety toolkit. Um, and so this could be something, especially if you're running a community donation garden of an actual of interactive activities that you can use to interact with your workers and volunteers to educate them on safe practices. And it's available on our extension store. All right, so going back over our learning objectives, um, we first identify risks that could lead to cross-contamination in the garden. Um, and next we illustrate when you should wash your hands and then we demonstrated food safety risk and correction actions through um, scenario activities. And so I want to thank you all for being good sports and interacting with the activity. And so uh, this is the end of my presentation. Um, and you can contact me at the information on the slides. And now I will take any questions. Well, thank you, Shannon. Here, it looks like Scott had to leave here. I think he got a ride since it's been blizzardy up here in Fargo, North Dakota. I think he was able to try to get back to Fargo here, but I'll do my best to look at the chat and kind of read the questions for you. Okay, and I see one right away is what is the best way to sanitize harvest containers? Um, you want to make sure that you're first cleaning them. So cleaning them, meaning taking away that um, using soap and water to get rid of the organic matter first. And then as far as sanitizers, um, I can look for a guide that we have uh, for gardeners that kind of recommends specific sanitizers, but whatever you want to use a food grade sanitizer and you want to follow the um the instructions that is on the label of that actual sanitizer. So um, depending on what type of sanitizers you use, then um, you wanna follow that instructions. So vinegar, Becky put in the chat about um, vinegar. So vinegar would probably be more than a, san would serve a role as a sanitizer than actually a cleaner. So you do want to do some form of cleaning with the actual soap. So finding a, a good soap alternative for yourself for cleaning and then looking for an appropriate sanitizer. And there could be some that are acetic acid base that you might like that'll be appropriate for your sanitizing. And then Mary put in the chat, um, if a bird pecks your tomato, should it be thrown away? Yes. 
Um, so birds are um, transmitters of the foodborne pathogen salmonella, um, the certain birds. Um, we've done some work in, um, during my doctoral program, we did some work on um, some birds that even flew over feedlots and we saw many of foodborne pathogens uh, from their actual feces. So I'd imagine what can come from their beaks itself. But yeah, if they are pecking at your tomatoes, you wanna throw those tomatoes that they peck that away. And then Janice put in the chat bleach with water. That is more of a sanitizer. And then, so you'll use that as your actual sanitizer, but um, you wanna make sure that you're doing it at the appropriate level as far as um, whatever concentration you wanna do it at. I know normally, and especially with our scientific research, um, we do um, a 10% bleach solution. Okay. Becky here said that never thought of using a tart to gather produce, but also that plastic buckets would work nice too for putting produce in. So, yeah, and there are some people, like I said, the farm that we visited had those wooden containers. So, use it. And I think with the size, their, their wooden containers were similar to the one we saw in Jim's photo. And so, I, for our video that we developed, I put like a turkey bag, the one that you put the um, you use at Thanksgiving, and that was a good big enough liner to um, to fill up that container and um, display to collect produce. Any other questions? So when you find poop, it's, you, I guess you develop your risk or look at your risk. Um, we, with our Produce Safety Alliance training that we do for the Food Safety Modernization Act, um, it says that it's best practices to recommend that you um, block off that area and you decide you know, how far you wanna go with that area and kind of segregate that and say that this will be your no harvest zone. Um, there are people who actually have smaller shovels that will scoop it out, but you just want to make sure you have everything ready to properly dispose of it right then and there. The um, only thing there is that um, if you do not handle it well and drop it, that only makes it worse. So I think that's why um, even with our trainings, we do the no harvest zone. Field mice, and I, the thing I'm learning about mice, and I'm from Alabama, so we don't even call them mice. People laugh at us because I call everything a rat. Um, I've heard of people um, putting up fences or even double up fences to try to keep pests out of there, but I know that they find ways to dig in. Um, I would just also, you know, reaching out to your local extension and outreach um, to um, ask them of ways to mitigate them in your field. They there are experts in those areas that could give you more suggestions on that. Um, but for field mice or pests out there, you know, looking for the proper way of deterrent. And I've heard of people doubling up fences um, using, um, and not for mice, but using for some certain animals, using the actual plastic animal to deter them from there. That's natural ways. So there's a question about how to keep natural ways of keeping pests out. That's why I think in a couple of weeks, um, a horticulturist will be here. So um, reaching out, you know, asking some of those questions then, um, just finding the appropriate way to deter them is the best way. Natural way, um, I've, I've heard, like I say, people using the plastic um, animals to deter them from there. Um, and someone either at our Hort station, um, our manager there has a, a gun that deters pests. I wouldn't go outside when he shoot it because I scare easily. 
So we um, have a pest management video that we offer different suggestions, and that is one of them using a flare gun to deter pests. Any other questions? Looks like we had someone in chat that said Grandpa Gus mouse repellent works well for them, for mice and gophers. I don't know if you know anything about that. No, no I told y'all, me and rats, we don't <laughs> get along. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I like them much either, I guess. No. <laughs> and then from the from the questions, everybody else does not like them either. Yeah. <laughs> we want to thank everybody again for joining us. Um, and as Scott said at the beginning of the meeting, we have um uh we Ju Julie has a whole list of people that are going to come and speak with you all um about different areas related to your topics and she said gardeners and home food preservation and all are the different topics that are going on so thank you all for joining us yeah and thank you so much for presenting on this it's very interesting to learn about how to keep produce a lot safer and cleaner all right everybody have a great afternoon and thank you for the well wishes in the chats mm -hmm.